During the late 19th century, a Cherokee woman named Narcissa Chisholm Owen experienced prosperity as well as hardships. In this Cherokee Almanac, we learn about Narcissa's influence and no matter her circumstances, how she exemplified strength and resilience, as did many Cherokee women before her. The mother of Cherokee painting, Narcissa Chisholm Owen, was born in 1831 in Indian Territory to old settler Cherokee chief Thomas Chisholm. But there was a lot more to Narcissa's story than art. What we know about Narcissa's childhood from her memoirs is she mentions that she was kind of a idle-minded kid and had a love for drawing. While Narcissa showed an affinity for art at an early age, it would not be a skill she honed until her retirement. As a young woman, Narcissa became a teacher and moved east. Narcissa moves away from the Cherokee Nation and eventually marries an active businessman by the name of Robert Owen. They make their life in Lynchburg, Virginia, which winds up in some ways being the heart of the Confederacy. Narcissa and Robert had two sons together, Robert Jr. and William. They enjoyed a lavish lifestyle. After her husband's death, however, Narcissa became the sole provider for her two sons. Her life was having to start all over. Her husband was deceased, her boys were in college and doing very well, and she had to replace herself in society. Once a Lynchburg socialite, she had nothing anymore. And so she found her way back to Indian Territory to teach school at the Cherokee Seminary to teach music classes. Now back in Oklahoma, Narcissa ensured her son Robert found success. Narcissa's long-term connections to the Cherokee Nation enable her to return home, but they also enable Robert to start a life there. Without her, he never would have been one of the first state senators from Oklahoma. Narcissa retired from teaching and began to help her son Robert with his political career. Later in life, Narcissa travels with her son, Robert L. Owens, and it's during this trip that she reconnects with some of her older hobbies. She loved painting as a young girl, and she takes that back up. But she's also inspired by, by what she's seeing and some of the art of the day, and that's when she takes up portraiture and is inspired by landscapes. In her published memoirs, Narcissa shares about her journey back to art and the joy it brought her. I have found art my greatest resource and genuine pleasure and pastime. Narcissa would go on to paint iconic figures of both Cherokee and American people. Narcissa painted the inventor of the Cherokee syllabary, Sequoia, and Thomas Jefferson and his descendants. She also captured her own image on canvas in a self-portrait. For Narcissa, the early years of the 1900s were filled with art and politics, Narcissa advocated for women's rights and joined the suffrage movement. Just think of Narcissa Owen herself. Her son is a U.S. senator, but she couldn't even vote for that man. She couldn't vote for anybody. She thought that to be a democratic wrong that needed righted. In fact, Narcissa fought to right two wrongs. Narcissa's advocacy for suffrage winds up doing double duty because not only is she advocating for women broadly to gain the right to vote, she's also advocating for Native women, many of whom, even if white women gained the right to vote, would not have gained the right to vote themselves. Narcissa passed away on July 12th of 1911 and did not get to see women gain the right to vote. Her greatest gifts to the Cherokee Nation and to America were when she was an elderly woman. From about 1900 until her death in 1911, was when Narcissa Owen really shined, and her name became nationally known because of that. Narcissa was a woman of her moment, as we all are, and she understood the changes and the contours of the world around her, and so she developed thinking around those issues that, that responded to the things that she was concerned with, suffrage, developing a world that, that she saw as potentially a better place than how she left it. Narcissa Chisholm Owen, a teacher, a mother, an artist, and a suffragist. A Cherokee woman who met all situations with her head held high and a can-do attitude. To be brief, I think life is very much what we make it and what we make of ourselves. Riches or prosperity do not make happiness. Neither do poverty and sorrow make misery. We can lift ourselves above these things and be happy and contented and useful in spite of all that we commonly call hard luck. 
or misfortune. 